here is what we will make. It snaps, it collects the data from what it overlaps, and it uses a decal to highlight what it surrounds. First, go into the player controller. Tick show mouse cursor and enable click events. Make a new actor class. I'll call mine selector box. Inside selector box, add a box collision component. Adjust the box extent. Also adjust the location. You want the corner of the box to be at position 0, 0, 0 in its local space. Now go back into your player controller. Off of begin play, let's spawn the selector box. Use the hit result under the cursor to get the location. And make sure you promote the result to a variable. Switch out the event begin play with a left mouse button. And on the release, use an is valid before you go into a destroy actor. Go back to the selector box and make sure that the box is selected. Go down to your render settings and untick hidden in game. This will allow us to see our box while working with it. You should now be able to click a box in the world and release it to destroy it. In the selector box blueprint, get a reference to your player controller. We are going to create a loop that makes the box follow the mouse cursor. Go over to the functions tab and add a new function. Use the set box extent node. Select the get hit result under cursor by channel node and the get actor location node. Drag off of the location and get a subtract. And let's subtract the get actor location from that and plug it into the set box extent. Set your follow mouse cursor node and loop it back to the follow mouse cursor node. We now have a box that can expand, but we want the original corner to stay in place. Add another function. Use a set relative location node, and we'll also use the get scaled box extent node. Let's add this function into our loop. The corner of our box is now in place, but we notice that the box expands too far. Go back into the follow mouse cursor function, add a multiply, convert the pin to float, set the value to 0.5, and hook it back up. The box is now behaving as we'd like. Make some height adjustments to the box extent and its location. Also account for those adjustments in the follow mouse cursor function and in the keep corner in place function. Now the box can extend over the objects and all the way through the grid. I also want my box to have a snapping effect. So go back to the player controller where we spawn the actor and let's disconnect the location wire. Go to the location pin and split it. Also drag off of the spawn transform location and make a vector. Drag off of the X and get a divide. Drag off of the bottom pin and promote it to a variable. My grid size is 400 by 400, so that's the default number I'll give my variable. Let's round it, and then let's multiply it again by the grid size. Let's duplicate this and plug the same thing in for the Y, and then connect to the Z. Highlight and make a copy and go back into the follow mouse cursor function, paste it, and let's plug in the same math here. If you get an error, it's because we haven't created a variable of our grid size yet. Now we get a snapping effect, but it snaps twice as large as I prefer. So back in the follow mouse cursor function, let's actually set the grid size variable to 200 because we have to account for the math that we've already performed to offset the scaling. Now it snaps to the grid exactly as I want. Now that we can control our collision box, 
let's set up a way to collect the data from the actors that it overlaps. Let's make a new function. I will call mine print actors. Now you might think that the get overlapping actors node would suffice. However, I had difficulty getting it to function correctly with our collision box. So instead, let's right click and search overlap. Under collision, we see box overlap actors. Here we can enter in the box position and the box extent and get out what we need. Drag off of the box reference and search bounds and get component bounds. We can simply plug in the origin to the box position and the box extent to the box extent. We will also need to select an object type, so promote this to a variable, add an array element, and in the drop down you can select the object types that you want it to receive. The three actors I have in my scene are world static. If you have several types that you want it to receive, add another array element and select what you need. In the actor class filter, I'll simply select actor. Drag off of the out actors and select a for each loop. Drag off completed and select print string and then detach that. Go into your local variables and let's add a string array. Get the array and select an add. Drag off of your print string and search join. And now we're going to add all the array elements together to be printed out at the same time. Let's separate them with a comma and some space. Let's make sure that we clear the array after each iteration. Go back to the event graph and add it into your loop. The functionality of our selector box is working pretty well now. Let's give it a highlight so that the player can see it in runtime. Go to the components and select the box and then add a decal. Make sure that the decal is a child of the box. Adjust the size of the decal box to the collision box and make sure you put it in the right position. We can now see a default decal being projected onto the grid. Let's work on the size. Let's make another function for the decal. You'll notice that in the details panel we can set the decal size, but we cannot set it from within blueprints. So instead, we will set it by adjusting the scale. To make the adjustments, Let's divide from the box extent, convert the pin, and let's divide it by 100. Don't forget to add it to the loop. The decal is now being sized properly for our box. However, we need to readjust the axis that it is projecting from. When you rotate it, make the proper sizing adjustments. Inside the update decal function, we are also going to need to make some adjustments. The decal now appears to be projecting correctly. All we have to do now is make a simple material to add to it. I already have a material made and it looks like this. This is the setup for my material. Make sure that the material domain is set to deferred decal, blend mode, translucent, and shading model, thin translucent. You can probably get away with just adding a color. I am multiplying mine by the same sample texture that I used to create my grid. Now we can go back and retick hidden in game. And now we have a proper snapping selector box which reads the data 
from the objects that it surrounds. For a brief recap, we only used two classes, our player controller and a new class, selector box. In the player controller, we spawned the selector box at the point of the mouse cursor. In the event graph of the selector box, we created a loop to update our functions. In the loop, we made four functions, the follow mouse cursor function, the keep corner in place function, the print actors function, and the update decal function.